Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Feels good. It feels good. 104-91, the Bucks beat the Boston Celtics tonight. Uh, back on the winning side of things. Come on in the room. Uh, I guess we can do it. Doc is our doctor. He made a he made a change to the starting lineup tonight, so we'll do it. Doc is our doctor. He writes out all our scripts. He gives us our medicine in our room. We are live as the Cream City crossover. Guru Trey Crosby the third. JT. Chris King. Yeah, yeah, we are all in the building. It's a 104-91 win. The Milwaukee Bucks get off a four-game losing streak. Um, and well, all things were right up into it, like through the middle of the third quarter. So the Bucks win the battle. We don't know if they've lost the war just yet because you know, if Giannis is, is seriously or severely hurt, uh, this thing all comes crashing down anyway. Uh, but for now, we're going to celebrate this win. Uh, get at me. I don't know your, your thoughts about Giannis, your thoughts about this game. Get at me on the Twitter at T-C-I-I-I-E-S-Q. Uh, and then get at us on the chat as well in the YouTube chat. Uh, of course, thoughts and prayers going to Giannis. Uh, we saw that's the big story out of this. Um, regardless of the st- score, Giannis goes down the third quarter, not no contact, just is running down the floor and plops down. Of course, everybody thinks Achilles. First thing when you hear that, um, he is going to have an MRI that they're they're going to do MRI on the Achilles and and everything. But we heard what was it left? What they say? There's a calf strain. But what, what was the the Soleus. muscle? That, Soleus. Soleus left. So I've never heard of that. Um, the left soleus strain. So we'll talk some more about that. Um, but again, we'll talk about the game to a 104 to 91 victory. But the Milwaukee, like, make no mistake about it, the Milwaukee Bucks took it to the Boston Celtics as soon as this thing tipped off. Like, like, in, and Brooke Lopez started the things off, and, and this thing was a beatdown from the very beginning. Uh, and, and let's talk about it. Let's do the game recap for tonight, sponsored all, as always by who? The law officer, Daly M. Johnson. When you need defense off the court, you call the law office of Daly M. Johnson when you need defense off the court. He's giving criminal defense, trafficking OWI defense, temporary restraining orders, and injunctions. Call him at 608-893-8370. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And Daly will get this, uh, get everything going for you. You can get him at 411 West Main Street, Suite 110, Madison, Wisconsin. Uh Go to his website, www.dmjlaw.com. Sign up for a free phone or in-person consultation. Uh, we're celebrating tonight after the dub. Uh, the Milwaukee Bucks win 104-91. And let's get into our game recap. Patrick Beverly inserted into the start lineup. Who, who would have thought the best guard on the floor tonight was Patrick Beverly? 20 points and 10 boards, 3 assists. 8 of 13 from the field, 4 of 8 from 3. Uh, when you have your opportunities, take the most of them, make make the most of them. Um, take advantage of the opportunities. Patrick Beverly gets a start. Malik Beasley moved to the bench. And Pat Bev came in, and I think Boston. So when you look at Chris, Giannis, Brooke, Pat, Dane, the guy you're probably gonna, is going to get some shots, kind of like Malik Beasley as well. You're gonna the shots are going to flow to Patrick Beverly. Uh, he actually takes the most shots of the team outside of Bobby Porter's. But the shots are going to flow there. Why? Of course, because he's he's the worst starter in that group. And so he takes eight. Think about this. This is, I mean, these are some real – this was the Malik Beasley kind of role that he gets. He took eight threes tonight. Like, and everybody wondered, why is Malik Beasley shooting so much? He's open. Patrick Beverly's of that group, he's going to be open. And he's got to knock him down at a high rate, four, eight from three. At least keep you honest. Brooke Lopez started off, I think, four, four from three. He puts up 15 and six. Uh, Giannis, 15, 8, and 7, probably gets a triple-double if he doesn't get hurt here in the third quarter. 28 minutes of action for him. Two blocks, one block was just insane, the block where he almost had a turnover, and then Jalen Brown gets the ball going to the basket, and Giannis goes, goes, gives you the hustle and blocks a shot. Um, 12, 6, and 9, I mean, Chris Milton just kind of hums to triple-doubles, as I think uh, Tatonia World uh, told me uh, in, in Twitter today. Uh, just just hums to him. Yeah, <laughs> here's the thing, though. <laughs> 12 points, six rebounds, nine assists, and seven turnovers. I mean, Chris was like, I mean, Chris was a turnover machine. And I swear it's like mm. nine assists to seven turnovers. It just doesn't compute, man. Like they've got to, we talked about this before on the last show against the New York Knicks. 
you got to value possessions. You got to value the ball more. Chris did not do that tonight. Uh, Dame had three turnovers as well, and Giannis had four turnovers. So your three main ball handlers, and Giannis only played, didn't even play a full three quarters. Uh, that's 14 turnovers between three guys, and I, they, they, they've they just got to value possessions a little bit more. Uh, Bobby Portis, 15 and 10, 7 of 13 from the field, um, so a good night from him. Malik Beasley, five points, two of seven, one of five from three. Pat Connaughton, uh, you know you know Pat, he running around out there. Uh, Andre Jackson Jr. got in for a hot second, and A.J. Green um, really had some good moments there, two of three, three six points uh, in 18 minutes of action. The Boston Celtics just didn't look good. They didn't look like they were prepared or ready to play. 14 um, and 10 for Jason for Jalen Brown of 7 and 19 shooting. Tatum, 22 on 19 shots. Drew Holiday, 12, 7 and 5, 12 points on 13 shots. Derek White, 9 points on 10 shots. Peyton Pritchard, 6 points on 9 shots. Sam Hauser, 8, Sam Hauser, eight points on 8 shots. So, again, Boston just did not play a, a, a very crisp game. They shot under 40% from the field. The Bucks shot 53% from the field and uh, 47% from three. Uh, Boston, again, under 40% from the field and 32% from three. Again, the Boston Celtics do not look good when their threes do not fall. And tonight, their threes did not fall. I thought they got some decent looks. There was – so, I mean, to get the, to their credit, they have the one seat locked up. There was no Kristaps Porzingis tonight. There was no Al Horford. And so, immediately, you see this advantage – to Milwaukee, the Bucks. I mean, I thought they were going to try to dominate inside, uh, but again, it was the outside game that was working early. The Bucks shot the ball very well, and you know, I, I was talking a little junk on Twitter, and and you know, you get those emotions starts to fly because this is one time is is something. Two times start to trend, and this is now the second time that the Milwaukee Bucks have come out and absolutely dominated the Boston Celtics. Like you know that like that first half was domination from the Milwaukee Bucks and probably should have been a little more. Um, and I thought the difference was just all out effort. Like the Bucks gave a lot of effort. I thought defensively, I thought offensively the ball moved around um, very well. And, and so that's, that's a lot of the things um, that you absolutely want to see. You want to see those kind of things. Um, you want to see Giannis. There was a turnover coming back, getting a block. Brooke Lopez had a couple blocks early. Like that uh, Patrick Beverly getting in the past. Like, that's what you want to see from the Milwaukee Bucks. You saw that kind of, we talked about it hair on fire kind of defense and we're we're getting to every loose ball we're getting to things faster than the other team 100 100 balls i saw a lot of that in the first half i didn't see it in the second half um and then i think there was the shock of losing Giannis and how that looked and everything but you know also the bucks didn't play a great 48 minutes it was a great 24 and then you had some moments i think and I, i'll say this before let's go jt I thought in, in the third and fourth quarter, two guys really stepped up because Boston made a run. I think they got it to nine. They got it to like nine or 11. I'm not sure what it was, but two guys that made the plays in the third and fourth quarter. I thought Bobby was good kind of throughout, and he had some bad shots like some times, but was good throughout. But the two guys really made the plays in the third and fourth. Patrick Beverly in the third quarter uh, hit a couple threes that really, like I think, you know, get it down to 11 and boom. I had two threes. Now it's back up to 17 or something like that. And then, uh, and then your boy, uh, Derry Bird, um, had, I mean, I think Boston got down to 13 and boom, those three, again, that, that 15 kind of number is like, is one of those numbers that you look at and go, okay, it's a 13 point game. If I get another bucks, 11, 10, 20, you know, those are numbers that, that look a little better. And then a, a three is like a dagger to the heart when you're down 13 and feeling like you can make a run. Boom, down 16 at down first down 13 is a big difference. And all the AJ Green made a lot of plays um down the stretch. And the Bucks just again, and, and then I, I will also say, even when Giannis went down, to hold and sustain that lead and make sure you don't give it up and, and don't lose one where you were already up 20 points to the Boston Celtics. Um, a really good job for the Milwaukee Bucks tonight, facing adversity. No Giannis. I, I appreciate the effort. I thought they played a solid game um for the most part. And, and again, they needed this one tonight. You're talking about a must win the other night. Tonight was a, was another one you could consider a must win for the Milwaukee Bucks. They went at 104 91. That's what I saw, JT. What do you see? Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with you. And one thing I really liked about tonight is they came out, you know, they came out with the mentality of going belt to ass. And I say that because literally, I mean, first play, what was it, first, second play of the game? Chris throws that beautiful alley oop to Giannis. And we've seen that for years. We love that chemistry. And we're, we're, we're hoping that eventually develops with. With Dane, but if you think about that first quarter, I mean, I think Brooke Lopez was like four for five from three. The Bucks were eight for ten from three. The Bucks shot fourteen from eighteen overall, and you saw that, right? And you saw this team come out. You saw the fire and the energy there. Um, the uh, you know post halftime in the third quarter again, 
there was some sloppiness there because you talked about it with turnovers. You realize we only scored 15 points in the third quarter. That that is not it, right? And it, 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 it's not it at all. But one thing I want to one thing I want to point out is Patrick Beverly in the lineup. We talk about him as a defensive as a as a defensive guard, right? And we say that that the, the combination of maybe Pat Bev and Dame is a little bit stronger, you know, overall than obviously Dame and Beasley or you know Dame and whomever. But one thing about Patrick Beverly I like is although he shot the most uh, shots on the team tonight, he's 20 and 10. Patrick Beverly still to me seems like a more of a pass first guy unless I have an open shot. Right. So he's willing to take I'll take what you give me. I'm not going to really go out. He's not going to go out of his way to create something or, or force up a shot. And generally speaking, Pat Beverly's shot selection, I think, is pretty good. And I think that's one thing that's definitely underrated because. When you had Beasley in, right now you just got a bunch of you just got a bunch of shooters. Like, oh, I'm gonna pull it if I got it, right? Whereas Pat Bev, I think it's a bit more strategic. And a lot of times he's making extra passes, he's swinging that thing around the perimeter, and you got to give him credit. You got to give him credit for it. You certainly do. One thing that I, I I do like, so I was a little concerned. So Giannis goes out, and I know we're gonna jump into this a little bit later. Uh, and the question that I had was, how is this team gonna respond? Who's gonna write the ship? Who's gonna be the leader? Uh, with with Giannis being out, and I and I agree with you. I think you saw that combination. You saw Pat Bev trying to do some things. You saw Bobby trying to do some things as well. And guys, we may be in a situation where the next three games we're going to see you know John Horse work play out. This is the roster you built. If Giannis needs the rest, and I'm assuming that he certainly does, then you're gonna you're, you're gonna have to rely on everybody else in that building to to pick up the slack and hopefully get us you know two three more wins before the end of the season. For me, I just think the biggest thing tonight was we were able to get stops. And that's something we struggled in that four game losing streak. And I don't want to lose sight of that, right? This is a great win, gets the spirits a little bit higher than it was. But also, we have to remember the inconsistencies that this team brings. Uh, so you can't really be surprised at whatever happens in the playoffs. But I thought this was a good step forward, just getting stops on a team with all star caliber players, with players who can really torch you. And, and they did their thing tonight. I know. Al Horford and uh, who else was it was out for for Celtics um, whoever Chris it was Stops. Chris, Stops. Stops. Chris, Chris Stops. I know they were out but you know you, you still like to see the the defensive effort because good things happen when you do get those stops we saw them running out in transition dominating the boards uh, and and I think that's a part of the reason you were able to win this game tonight um, outside of that, I think you guys pretty much hit it on the head. Look, A.J. Green, huge after that Giannis injury. It definitely does something to your team when you see your superstar go down like that and have to get help to the locker room. But A.J. Green comes in and fires one from like 30 feet and drills it, and it felt like the Bucks just uh, never wavered. And that was also something, you know, maintaining a lead was huge for the Bucks because these last couple games they've been blowing 10-point leads. They've been blowing early leads in the first half. They kept their foot on their necks, and, and that's a, a quality of a really good team. So uh, we like to see them maintaining those leads and at least, you know, starting out uh, strong versus versus a good team. So I, I liked what I saw tonight. Um, let me let me ask you guys this. And again, I know we, we will get on the Giannis injury. And I want to before we get to there, there's I have a lot of questions about the Giannis injury, too. But um, before we get to that, the topic that we have at hand is Boston Fluke Boys. Let me ask you, can you take and there's an interesting um Somebody in the chat, and I, I can't find it right now, said, did you – and I, because the crazy thing is I thought the exact same thing. Somebody said, did you think that – um, did you think – was it odd or something like that? I can't – I'm trying to find it. I can't find it. Did you think it was odd that, that Joe Mazzula didn't call a timeout to like four minutes left in the in the first when they were getting beat down, right? And I and I thought that was odd too because, again, normally if this is a game you're, you're – I don't want to say trying to win. I don't give them that excuse. But if it's one of those games, right, like you're going – you got to call a timeout. Like, Brooke Lopez couldn't miss. Like, the Bucks are on fire. You call a timeout and try to get things settled down. He didn't do that. Um, and and it, it's just – I thought that was interesting. But let me ask you guys this. What do you guys think, if anything, do you gain anything from this game? Or is it just, hey, Boston wasn't on their night. Maybe they didn't really care. Maybe they, they got the one seed wrapped up. They did sit uh, Porzingis. They did sit Al Horford. You know, this does – are you of the mindset that this game meant something? Or did it mean nothing? And again, well, I, I, I'll let you guys give me your answer and thoughts on that. Not really. I, I, mean, I don't really think it, it, it meant anything. One thing I'll say, though, is I think as, as Bucks fans, and I think if we look at our guys, if we play the way we can. And, I mean, our role players are kicking. Giannis and Dame are kicking. I think we can beat Boston. They don't look like this team that's, that's just insurmountable, right? They don't look like a team where they just you just cannot be beaten. Yeah, I think Boston is a very beatable team. I think they're good. I think they have a lot of young talent. You know, obviously they're superstars and 
I don't know if we're going to call Brown that. He's the highest paid. But obviously, you know, Tatum, Porzingis, their lineup, Derek White, you name it. They've got a lot of talent there. And they've had some decent, some pretty deep playoff runs. But they don't look unbeatable to me, provided that we have all of our guys and everybody shows up. Part of me feels like we lose to Boston in part because we lose our we we we, uh, we beat ourselves. And that's something that I think you got to think about against this team. But I'm not I'm not I'm not scared of Boston. I certainly don't want to see him before the Eastern Conference Finals. But I think we can match it well. And if we compete, we we uh, we have a really good chance of winning that series. Yeah. Um, so I'll hold my comments on what I think Boston is uh, until we until we actually like officially get to the topic. But what does this mean for the Bucks? Yeah, I think this is actually uh, it, it means a lot because you're able to get back in the win column, but not just against anybody against the Boston Celtics, regardless of who's out. I think it just shows that they, they're able to have the resiliency and something went down, uh, whether it was the starting lineup change with Pat Bevin there or just locker room talk or, or however they were able to motivate these guys to want to win and maintain a lead. I mean, they could have very well easily dropped five in a row um, because I don't, honestly, I don't think Kristaps and Al Horford are, are that big of a difference. Um, so like, you know, they still had their superstar guys out there. Um, so I think, you know, it's just, it's good for the confidence, especially trying to lock up that two seed. And, and then, you know, you got Orlando and, and Thunder who are not as good as Boston, in my opinion, even without uh, KP and Al Horford. So I think it's just, it's good for the confidence for sure. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's good for the confidence. It's interesting, like, I mean, and that was one of, one of my thoughts is, damn, is 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 Chris Osborne, is, is he even that much of that team? Is he, is, is like, or do they fall apart without Chris Stops? Like, I like I get, like, if Giannis isn't there or Dame isn't there, the Bucks fall apart. But, like, I don't think, I mean, again, if Brooke Lopez doesn't play, I don't think that, that's, like, a death sentence right. for the Bucks. Like, is that, you know, I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they really, again, he has been, to me, the difference. I don't think Drew has been as much of a difference for Boston as as Chris Stops has been. But Chris, go ahead. You said you want to talk. What what do you think about about Boston? Like like just overall um what what do you think about him? So I all right, go I got a, I got an actual take here. Look, go I think ahead. I think you're as big of a threat to Boston as anybody in the NBA. And I think we've seen it in those in those past two blowouts. I mean, I guess you can call tonight a blowout, but uh just a dom you dominated the game tonight. Um and so it's just about for the Bucks. Can they get there? I think, honestly, I, I think you match up really well. And obviously, basketball is all about matchups. I think they don't pose the same threat that a lot of these young teams do with guards who can just explode by you. Like tonight, for example, I thought Beasley, even Beasley, did a good job of staying in front of Drew Holiday. Like, I, I, I'm, not, I was very underwhelmed by them tonight. Um, yeah, I, I think that the Bucks are better and. Call me crazy. Call me. Look, it, proof is in the pudding. This team has beaten them handedly twice now. Uh, and regardless of who's out, because I don't think they had anybody major out uh, last time when we beat them by 40. Uh, look, I'm just not as scared as I would be against like a, a team like maybe Philly with Joel Embiid cooking. Uh, I'm not as scared as, as maybe even a Miami with we know what Jimmy Butler brings in the playoffs. So, yeah, I, that that's pretty much my take on, on the Boston Celtics. I think that they're pretty underwhelming to me. That is a take to say they're underwhelming. I'm I'm not going to go that far. I know we got a lot of, well, maybe I'll address it at the end of the show, a lot of Knicks fans that came in here and, and oh, got man. upset with how we, sure with how we talked about the Knicks. And yeah, Boston fans might might have something to say about that. I, I'm not going to say they're underwhelming. I think they do have deficiencies and some flaws that, that are apparent and show themselves. And yeah, you know, they, they are very dependent on a three-point shot. They just are. And I don't think it's because they can't do other things. It's because they choose not to. Um, and they, if you if you can out out will them and out battle them, they will decide to settle. Um, and and they'll take those threes whether they're hitting them or not. But again, they do make a lot of them. They're a very good three point shooting team. It is what it is. But I, I you know, I, I I agree with you. I do think the Bucks are, are are a very big threat to them, even at full capacity at full health. Uh, but Boston just plays a little more connected. They play a little better. Um, and, and I think they, 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 they look to go for the kill shots where I think sometimes the Bucks can get a little careless and, 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 and reckless with the basketball. And you saw that a bit tonight. Um, again, we're going to get to Giannis. I want to ask you one question before we go to Giannis, before we, we start on the Giannis uh, topic and discussion. Um, what did you guys make of Doc Rivers making the subs, the, the switch in the lineup and taking Malik Beasley out and going with Patrick Beverly? 
I love it. I love it. A, because you had to do something. You're coming off four straight losses. You, you, you got to switch up something as well. And Pat Beverly gives your offense some different strengths, right? I think he's a better passer. I think he's a much he's a better defender. Uh, Pat Beverly can hit shots right now. He's not he, – obviously, he's not ninth in the NBA in, in, in three-pointers like Malik Beasley. And Malik Beasley has, has, has been on a tear this year. However, having said that, it does feel like the clock struck 12 with Malik Beasley. I mean, since March 30th, his shooting – Four for 12, two for 13, three for 10, one for seven, three for six, and then tonight, two for seven again. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, but I think you had to change it up because we can't keep doing the same thing and expecting different results here. So I, I like it now long term. There's questions about that, right? Can we really have Pat Bet? Long term, we're going to need Malik Beasley to show up. At some point, you got to clock in here. You can't just collect the check and, 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 and you know, make 20% of your shots. Quick side note. For those of y'all who keep seeing that cup, got a little Basil Hayden for y'all, you know, a little Kentucky bourbon. You know, remember, you get that Basil Hayden, you got to reach up to grab that. That's not on the bottom. You're not getting on your knees to pick up that bottle. You got to reach up, right? So there, there, there's a key for our young listeners here. You, you got to reach up. A little more of a sophisticated like man drink. Right. That, 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 that drink's at eye level or higher, my friend. I like so, it. I like it. I think Beasley off the bench is a good change, and here's why. Well, so this was something we even touched on earlier in the season. Um, when J maybe when Jay Crowder was hurt, I thought we, you know, we held him to a little bit of a higher standard than he's come back and played. But we thought that Malik Beasley was a volume shooter, even when he had his good days. And so when you bring a volume shooter off the bench and you don't give him as many looks as, you know, he was getting in the starting lineup, I think it, I think it does well for his, his confidence, but it also is good for, um, you know, just making sure it decreases the shots if he's not hitting. So I think that it is a good change, especially defensively. Uh, I think we're able to start out with a with a bigger punch there than just having Malik Beasley out there um, by by bringing in Pat Bev. So I think it was good, but I like you said, Trey. I don't know how you know long term it necessarily goes for the Bucks because obviously Pat Bev. I don't know if he's going to be able to ma maintain that same type of efficiency on 13 shots. But I think it, it was good and it sparked some energy tonight. Yeah, no, it definitely sparks energy. And again, I, I'm looking at, you know, one of the main things, one of the other things been a problem, not just your defense, um, but rebound the basketball. And for a guard, Patrick Beverly is 100% going to do that just because of the energy and the effort level that he brings. And I think he he, he brings it on on all on, on, on every end, uh, on both ends. So Patrick Beverly ends up with a double-double tonight, 20 and 10, 10 boards, because he's going to go after everything. And that's not something Malik Beasley is going to do. He's not going to stick his nose in there and make those kind of – you need, and we talk about the PJ Tucker effect. You need somebody who's going to go in there and 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 play the make the dirty plays, do a little bit of the dirty stuff that you that, that some other guys aren't willing or just won't do. You know, Patrick Beverly is going to do it. Um, so again, I I I think it was one of those things where we talked about it before. Doc Rivers is, I, I think he was out of ideas. He's kind of grab. I got to throw something at the wall, see what sticks. Okay, bees, you're out. Let's bring somebody else in. I, I'm surprised it wasn't AJ. I'm surprised kind of wasn't AJ Green, but I guess I'm not surprised that it was um, Patrick Beverly that he puts in. And again, I think it, I, I, I'm like you guys. I think it works in the short term, and we'll see what happens. Because again, the, this could easily be again. You, you're shooting eight threes. That could easily be he's one for nine from three, and you're looking at basically uh, you know Beasley, but but better defense. And so that can definitely be an, an issue or a potential problem for him as well. Uh, let's go to the uh, let's go to the chat. Chat line, see what's going on. Al Farouk Amino for three says Bucks in six. 608 UW says it was a good win. F the Celtics. J1 says that was a dis discomfort injury. Um, Deco123 says, I hope Giannis gets some well deserved rest and that he's okay. State of mind says this team gives me a headache. Lose to the scrubs, but beat the number one team in the league. Praying for Giannis. Uh, Super Diakini says Giannis will be fine. He's walking. It had to be overused. Man needs some rest anyways. Um, let's see a couple more. Eli J says, interesting that Doc benched Crowder and Gallinari. Did, Gal did, did, did Crowder not play at all tonight? He didn't play at all. Did he play at all? Uh, let me see here. I don't remember Crowder not played at all? Um, let me let, let me know if he, if he if he if he didn't play at all. Uh, basketball reach says Pat Bevin to start lineup more AJ Green and no Jay Crowder was great. I don't think Jay, I, I know he didn't play a lot, but yeah, so he, he didn't get in at all. Um, and then Jay Wan says Giannis travels a lot. I hope he can clean that up. The, you know what's crazy? I there was a Boston fan on Twitter that said the same thing. And my thing, my take on that is, and again, especially on a night like tonight, 
where two free throws were taken between both teams. And, uh, clearly, some people had some uh, – had the referees had uh, had reservations that they could not miss. They need to get out of there. They, they finished that game in under two hours. They had to get to uh, – where, where, where do you think they went? JT, where were they at? Where, where were they at? Uh, they going to Pato tonight. Well, they, 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 they went in a private room out in Pato. They, they, they yeah, might, they yeah, might yeah. be in Pato. Might, might be a uh, rare had steakhouse. A, yeah, like, had a reservation at Rare for nine thirty. Yeah. Like, listen up, here's where we at. Y'all got to get dressed and keep this thing pushing. Right? I don't know, but um, yeah, my guess is, is they probably are at Rare Carnivore. They gonna hit Pato and then party, yeah. party at the party at the Fister. Absolutely. Yes. So, yeah. So, so yeah, I I think that, but my point there was, you know, when he, Giannis gets bumped off of his game on like his drives, when he's in his pivot, he gets bumped and pushed. And it's kind of like Shaquille O'Neal or somebody like that, or like, you know, what they say in football, you can call the holding on every play. You can call a foul on just about every Giannis drive, but he's so strong. Um, and that it's hard to, I mean, again, he, he go to the line 30 times a night if you want to do the game like that. So I think you, when, when you're, when you constantly are allowing him to get bumped off of his spot and off of his position, and you're not going to call every bump, I think you have to, if you're going to give some on those calls, I think you also have to give some on, on the shuffling of the feet, because if I bump you off your spot and it forces you to shuffle your feet, either I got, either I call a travel or I call a foul. And if I call fouls, I'm slowing the game down. If I call travel, we get, that that doesn't seem fair. So I think the only right thing there is to let a minor shuffle go. I do agree that Giannis does – it seems like he does shuffle his feet some, you know, going to the basket and, and in his pivot. But he, I, I think he's getting fouled at the same time. So I don't know how you combat that um, without letting both of those things go. Like, if you're not going to call one, if you, if you're not going to call one, you got to call the other. Um, appreciate it. Coran Jim Kenner says it was a DMP for Crowder. So, yeah, it's good um, – Good stuff. Let's um, let's. let's let, I think it's time to talk about to talk about the Giannis injury and what that means and where the Bucks go. So we all saw Giannis go down, um, and I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of different takes as to why, as to how long we think he's gonna be out, as to what we think he can play through, what he can't play through, and then is there any blame to go around? So I'll start and I'll say number one. Giannis has to be shut down for the rest of the year. Like, I, I was kind of in the, hey, we need to be in 2-3 seed. I know we have Orlando twice, and who is it, the Thunder as as well, a couple games, three games left in the season. At this point, as much as I want to keep the two seeds, as much as I want to be two or three, health is well. And when you have a legitimate injury like this, you have to sit him. Now, I think the question is, and Giannis has been on the injury board for like a month straight, how Big of an how, how much of an injury did he have? What did they know? What did they not know? Is there anybody to blame? Is there anybody at fault for this as far as the training staff? Say, so, hey, should he have been sitting earlier and maybe this wouldn't happen? Giannis carried this team for long stretches when when you know Dane wasn't playing at a high level and Giannis was playing at an MVP level. Um, and again, he's he's played a ton of minutes. I mean, like I know we talked about Mike Boonholzer. I think there's a comment about Mike Boonholzer and and Mike Boonholzer. But, I, it, it, but here's the thing, it kind of goes too far with me because I've said it before, I feel like Giannis gets winded and tired very easily, especially in the playoffs. And when you only play 30 minutes a night, you get to the playoffs and now I need you to go 42, you huffing and puffing. Whereas I felt like he needed more games where he went 35, 36, 37 minutes in the regular season. And that would help him when you get to the playoffs having to go 40 plus. That said, you always choose health over winning games. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can go. What, what do you guys make of it? What did you think in the moment when he went down? Um, you know, where, where I, I don't know where, where, you, where, where we go with this because again, if he, if Giannis is injured in, in any, in any amount, and I, I and I, I'll say this too, if Giannis is injured at all, I mean, like if he has to miss one, two games in the series, I, I don't know how the. But we saw this happen. And here's the other thing I'll say too, because if we do, I do think Giannis is going to miss the rest of the regular season. He's got to be back for game one of the playoffs if the Bucs are going to really try this thing. Be- and I say that because I believe that last year, Giannis could have played every single playoff game last year. He, if he, like, if he really wanted to. I think they got the big head, and they thought it's a, it's a, uh, this is 1B, 8C. They got the 8C coming in. Nah, we ain't worried about them. We, we're not worried. We're going we're to beat the Miami Heat. And, I, and that was I think that was the thought process behind playing the Miami Heat was they're not good enough to beat us 
we can get through this without Giannis. And we realized, uh, we can't. He's got to be ready game one of the playoffs. If he's not, the season I think is over. If he if he's if we're telling me he's gonna miss time in the playoffs, I think your season is absolutely cooked. Unless, of course, Dame Little looks like a is, is like an MVP Dame, and I haven't seen that yet. I'm just hoping that he plays at a at a high level all-star level at this point. But he's got to be ready to go game one. That 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 that's if there's a take that I'm giving from that, I think he's got to be ready to go. As soon as the playoff, if he has some discomfort, whatever, game one, you got ready to roll. I would agree with that. And I think that the thing, what was troubling to me and probably most people is when you saw Giannis go down, when I first saw him go down, I was like, what, what is happening here? I, I didn't I had to see the replay. And then I saw on Twitter and I said, oh, this is a non-contact injury. He goes down. First thing I thought was that Achilles was cooked. I, I, I was oh my goodness, right? I know what that looks like when guys are going down. I remember I tore my Achilles, so I, I like, right? Um. But, you know, I, I saw that. That was my first concern. My second concern, though, and again, it's I want to figure out, is this an injury that is based? Is this just overuse? Is this just exhaustion? Right. Because the reality of it is, if it is, we got a different problem. Because remember, his, y'all, y'all smiling. What's going on, man? Y'all in the chat? Y'all in the chat? Good. What y'all, what you're y'all, good. What y'all doing? Y'all, y'all sending don't. each other. Y'all sending each I other. I didn't do anything. What, y'all sending each other nothing. picture messages or what? I what literally what haven't done nothing. Look at what y'all got. All right, man. Nah, Go ahead. Man. Keep going. Keep going. Listen, listen, man, I mean, I'm talking and I got two men smiling and giggling. Like, what's going on, fellas? Like, what are you doing? All right. So, so anyway, though, what I what I will say though is, I was worried it's based on overuse because that's a, that that is an issue. Because remember, his hamstring was what was rumored to be the issue before. I think he was on the injury report for for hamstring. And so, you know, the next question I had was, was it the same leg? Because that's not good. That certainly is not good. If you've got hamstring problem in one leg and a cat and then and then, and then the calf as well or Achilles or whatever that is. But I think you I think you're right. I think you need to rest him. You need to make sure he's as fresh as possible. And I think you have to rely on the other guys on the team to pick up the slack. You you one hundred percent do. This is when you earn your paycheck. You don't earn your paycheck night in and night out. Yeah, you earn your paycheck when he's out. Because now Dame's got to show up. Now the guy we traded for when we said Batman and Super, okay, all right, Clark Kent, right? Lead the glasses in the briefcase at the uh, Metropolis, whatever the newspaper joint was at, right? And just hey, just show up in your uniform. You don't need no phone booth. Lead a house in it, right? And that's what we are going to need from from Dame at this point. We need all these different guys to step up. We got an Orlando Magic team that's very hungry. And they want, and and I guarantee you, they're gonna want to split one of those wins. They want 100 percent gonna want to split those, one of those wins. So then, who, who else do we play? Who do we play tomorrow? Orlando. Uh, Orlando. Or, I'm sorry, Orlando. We, so it's Orlando. I think it goes Orlando Thunder. Orlando. Right. Oh, yeah. So yep. yeah, and you got a Thunder team that we embarrassed the last time they played. They gonna want. They they gonna want to compete too. So the Bucks have to show up. Doc's got to show up. And I'm kind of thinking what will probably happen is Bobby's gonna slide into the starting lineup, and it'll be Bobby and Brooke. And then you'll have Chris, Pat, Bev, and and Dame, and I think that probably becomes your look. Which uh, it, it, you don't really have a lot of options at this point. But yeah, I mean, let's 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 hope let's hope that Giannis can be ready for the playoffs. He probably needs what ten days. Well, well, and it depends. Well, so it depends on the grade. So, and and I, I'm I'm reading here from Dr. Jesse Moore. Um, we've actually had him on our program before on uh, all your T's and Q's uh, on 97.3 The Game, iHeartRadio. But so he talks about uh, how calf muscles are. And he says, so I'll, I'll just read this this one part here. The soleus muscle is a deeper muscle and is much less commonly strained. This is responsible for keeping us upright. So this is a muscle in the calf that keeps you upright. There are three grades. We've heard about the three grades before. Grade one is a mild strain where you could return in two to three weeks. Now, again, that's probably, we're talking about a regular person here. So Giannis, two to three weeks is probably more like one week. Grade two is where you get into some trouble because that's a moderate strain, much more concerning. That's a four to six week injury. So you're you're basically hoping and praying that it's a grade one injury here. And then grade three is a rare season ending, ending injury. Um, and then he does follow up with saying, uh, by the way he was walking towards the locker room, he thought Achilles was much less likely. They are doing an MRI on the Achilles as well. Um, he says they're expecting to get an MRI on both the calf and, and the Achilles. He's going to do that. But he says, but they already likely have a good idea of what's going on by exam and ultrasound, which is very sensitive. So um, he doesn't think, again, based on video, 
Dr. Jesse Moore online does not think that it's a uh, that it that it's a Achilles injury. And I think you're, what sounds like is you're waiting on whether it's a grade one or grade two injury uh, to figure out severity. Yeah, so I think you definitely sit him for the rest of the regular season. I mean, you if he's going to get hurt at any point, God forbid, you don't want it to be in the last three games of the regular season. You want to give this team a, as much of a shot as it had at, at the first part of the season. So, yeah, definitely you sit him. Um, what I was thinking during it, oh, God. I mean, shades of 2021 uh, against Atlanta when you're, when you're thinking the worst with the knee injury. And so that came back a little bit. But, you know, I after – I was comforted by, by Dr. Jesse Moore. That's his name? Just, yeah, him. Uh, after I was comforted by him, yeah, I was fine. I was fine. I was like, all right, you know, we know GA's a workhorse, and, and they'll have no problem sitting him the rest of the regular season. And, look, I the 2-3 the seed thing is tough. Like, you've got you to gotta win some games to be the two, right? And so uh, hopefully Dame is able to show what he showed against the Clippers when he came out and dropped 40 or whatever it was against them uh, without Giannis. But then we also saw him uh, not, not play as well without Giannis uh, versus, who is it, the Raptors or something. Um, and so, you know, you, you just hope that he's able to carry his load and, and maybe even more than that. Um, with, without Giannis, because we know what he brings consistently. And uh, we know Dame can rise to the occasion, though. So that's that's something to keep in mind. But, yeah, I was definitely scared a little bit. Uh, I was definitely trembling and, you know, heart dropped a little bit when he was grabbing that. Just the back, back leg area, that's always tough. Like, at least he, like, kind of rubbed his calf instead of, you know, all the way down. He didn't go all the way down. Right. Uh, he didn't go. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He that's didn't just, go all the way down. Yeah, I know. Okay. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, right, didn't go he... all the way down. So, you know, he rubbed his calf. I, so then I, I was kind of comforted there, too. Uh, yeah, no, a hundred percent. I think, you know, that you feel a little bit better, but you, you don't know until you know. I think I remember. I remember when, um, and again, I don't think it's going to happen, but I remember and Bucks fans will remember when Jabari Parker went down and they said, oh, it's a cat. They, I think they called it like a calf injury, calf strength. They called it something like that. And next thing you know, you get the report, uh, you know, that it was, um, but I can't remember. The, no, he tore his ACL though. He, t- he tore his ACL, but they called it something else where, okay, maybe he's going to be okay. And next, you know, he, he's, it's a torn ACL. So you don't want to see that. You're hoping that's not it. I don't know if it was overuse or not. But yeah, I mean, you know, you you take you you get rid of him for the rest of the regular season. And so here's my question now, because we talked about it. This is a big game for the Milwaukee Bucks. They're now gonna have to win without Giannis, um, probably for the rest of the, for the remainder of the regular season. Do you think that you know, I know it doesn't matter at this point because health is all that's important, but like you said, this is a moment for Damian Lillard. This is three games for Damian like tonight, like again, Giannis went out in the third quarter. Dane did nothing. And I hate to keep doing – Dame I, – I, I thought tonight Damian Lillard was about to – okay, I'm going I'm to close this thing out because my guy Giannis is out. We're already up on the uh, on the Boston Celtics. Don't worry. Follow my lead. We're going to finish this thing out. And instead, I was looking at Pat Beverly to close this out. I'm looking at, at, a, at, a, at a one – at a, you know, a guy already on one leg and can't dribble. He dribbles worse than Jalen Brown. Chris Milton is closing us out. I mean, I, I'm just – I, I – what <laughs> – you know, uh, like like uh, my man uh, Dave Chappelle said after you know in any event goes down, they looking for where is Ja Rule? Where is Dane? Where is Dane? You can't. I mean, again, it, this is just it was a disappointing performance tonight. And so when we talk about, we've talked about on this show, and I've talked about it before. The hope is that Damian Lillard is going to. You talk about the team flipping the switch. The hope is that Damian Lillard has this switch that he's going to flip on when the playoffs hit. And that's what you're that's the hope upon hopes, the prayer upon prayers is that Damian Lillard is going to turn in to the guy that we traded for back in the offseason. And tonight in the third, late in the third, well, I think I think he was he might have been out when when Giannis went out, but the fourth quarter when he gets back in or whatever, you're thinking that's your time. And he doesn't, he, you know, he he wasn't, I mean, nothing happened. Like it was other guys that had to step up. So these are three games that you're probably defensively going to be without Giannis. These and and these are important. These aren't just regular season. These are important games, like splitting with Orlando at the very least. I think you need at least one of these next three, two, and I think you're golden for the two, three seed. 
Like, I need Damian Lillard to go out and, and be the factor, be the main factor as to why the Milwaukee Bucks win two out of the next three games. Can he which, do it? Which he wholeheartedly can. He 100% can. And I think as Bucks fans, there's a difference between people trying to criticize Dame and people saying, wait a minute, this is the guy that we've all seen around the league for a long time. It's the top 75 guy. Why are we not seeing this night in and night out from him? Because people can argue the averages. They can argue, well, his career numbers, and that's great. Unfortunately, his efficiency, not so impressive. And and you could have, and, and like you talk about with averages, well, averages could be one great night and one terrible night, right? That could eventually average itself out. But having said that, I do think, Dane, one ace that we have in our sleeve is the fact that Dane, for 10 years, or however long he was in Portland, put that team on his back and continued to do so, especially when they got in the playoffs. Now, it didn't, it didn't work out because they were typically overmatched. But having said that, we know that Dame can be that guy, and my guess is that Dame is probably looking for that, you know, looking and, and 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 savoring those opportunities to do that for this team. We've seen him do it throughout the season. So, man, last three games is Dame time, and that's the way we got to act. That's the way we hope that he acts and he approaches this thing. So we can, like you said, get maybe you know one win would be nice out of the three. Two would be great. What I'm not even worried about. Okay, well maybe you should worry about the wins, but. You know, will he show up on a consistent basis leading into the playoffs? Everybody's talking about he's a playoff riser, a playoff elevator, right? So does three games with the ball in your hands give you more looks when you're in the playoffs? And, and does it allow you to knock shots down at a more consistent clip? So that's that's kind of how I'm looking at it from that perspective as well. Just not, not even just willing the team to victories, but will it give him confidence to show playoff Dame time? Will, will he come out swinging in that first round uh, due to some good performances leading them into it? I think that would be best case scenario for this Bucks team, uh, for him to, to get his confidence back and aggressiveness that we need him to have in the playoffs because he's gonna be getting 40, 40 plus minutes in the playoffs, uh, assuming. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just hope I'm, I'm looking at him to just be aggressive and be consistent throughout so that we, we have something to look forward to during the playoffs. Yeah, he, he's got to be that. Um, a tweet coming in from Thanasis, uh, who says he just tweeted out from his Twitter account about 15 minutes ago, blessing oil with the prayer hands. So I guess they go. So, and then somebody said, please massage Giannis's legs with that blessing. Whoa, big bro. <laughs> They're going to bring the, uh, the, the witchcraft to, right, to, his ca to his calf. Right, listen, as long as they don't bring one of them masseuses that Deshaun was working with, we're well, going right. yeah. right. to be, we 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 be all right. Right. You know, yeah, right. What, what, hey, what, what, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> just got to get it done. Um, some, so, so the chat's a little upset here. Nick C says, I'm Dame's biggest critic. No, I am. Uh, but you're wrong. They were, <laughs> blitzing <him. laughs> they were blitzing him in every single ball screen. You can't close the game. They put two on you, Middleton, and his impressive handles. Yeah, no, again, I, Chris, I, I just talked about Chris Middleton. His start. I, I don't hold anybody. I, I, that's my thing. I'm going to talk about Chris Middleton. Seven turnovers, not as his turnovers, seven turnovers is not good. Um, but Damian Little, again, you know what Nick C, you know what Nick sounds like? Do you remember when, um, remember that, that open run? Uh, the video in the open gym, and uh, who was it? Uh, Devin, uh, Booker. Uh, Devin Booker in the corner. And Joel Keem Noah comes over and doubles. Him. Hey, we ain't doubling, man. No, no, they they doubling, dog. You got to get through that. Like, no, you you don't get this. You get to tell people they got two people on me. I can't do nothing. What what do you what do you think Kobe played through? What do you think? What do you think? Uh, LeBron at times has played through. Giannis has played as as won championships playing through a freaking wall. Like a little a teams literally walled him up. No, you have to win. Get I, like this whole this excuse of well they blitz me. I can't do anything. What about when you're one on one? What about when though? So even if you tell me that the blitz is okay, I'm not scoring off the blitzes. Then you need to score when the blitzes don't come. You need to score in those one on one spots. There was a possession, and I remember it vividly now. I believe it was in the third quarter. I think it was in the third quarter where Dame is driving. He's driving to the basket, and he, well, no, he actually Giannis set a screen, and Giannis rolled. The roll was there. Dame doesn't throw it. No idea why. Dame then drives middle. The clock is run down five, four, three. He gets like he could have maybe done, maybe could have done a runner, maybe pull up and stop, maybe tries to get all the way to the basket. Instead, he gets up in the air, doesn't know what to do, throws to the court to Malik Beasley, and there was two seconds left. Malik in his shot clock violation threw Malik Beasley a a, 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 a they called a, a grenade 
when you throw somebody the ball with no time left in the shot clock. That's, I mean, those are the plays where it's like, and again, I, somebody else in the chat said it. It's not so much that we are criticizing Damian Lillard or like, and like, you got to believe in Damian Lillard. He's got to believe in himself. He's got to believe in himself. I am trying to tell you, I, I do think Dame can do it, but you've got to show it. And he has not consistently done that again tonight. And again, I know there was a blowout and it was a big lead. I, I'm not trying to compare guys. The best guard on the floor was was Patrick Beverly. Like how how many how many games are there where we, where full games do you go? Well, mm -hmm. hey, the best player on the floor was not yet on the Bucks was not Giannis. Like how many times do you see that? We're like, oh, Bobby Porter's outplayed. It does. It very rarely happens. And again, this happens has happened often for Damian Lillard, where other whether it's the opposing guard or whoever he's facing or whatever. And this time it's Pat. So again, those are the type of things that I'm looking for. I want to see Damian Lillard dominate. That's all I'm saying. I need to see it. Um, and then I see some people in the chat saying Chris, whether Chris Mills is going to play tomorrow. I don't think there's a chance in hell Chris Mills plays tomorrow. I don't think there's a chance nah, in hell. Nah. I don't think there's a chance nah, in hell. Is, on a, on a, which, a back to back. Which is even more reason why we're going to need Dame to be Dame. We're going to be we need to be Dame to be the Dame we know. And 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 to be honest, as a Bucks fan, and to be and a because I'm I. I get it. Some of the criticism of Dame, I think, is is warranted. But I think as Bucks fans, this is this is tough because we thought that Dame, we saw this as this is a needle moving acquisition. This is this is a trade that we had wished for for so long, and we saw Dame, especially coming off last year and years before, we saw him be this impact guy, and he's came and he's and he's played, he's played well a, a lot, right? But there's just been a lot of bad in there too, and there's been there's been those ten for those nine for twenty nine shooting nights, those ten for twenty four shooting nights, right? Now sometimes you sprinkle in the eight for sixteen in there, but then you go back to four for twelve. There's been some hesitancy, and then there's been the stories that came out about Dame around All Star break when you criticized, or, or didn't criticize when he didn't left Giannis off the list. Which let's call that a non story, but the story that came out talking about how he wasn't happy and how he missed his family and missed everything in Portland too. I think that raised concerns. Having said that, he's a remarkable player. There's a there's there's a high percentage chance that he shows up and reminds everybody who he is and that he's the guy that he's been over the last eight, nine years. And I think the Milwaukee Bucks fans just want to see it. You just want to see that night in and night out if you can, because he certainly is very capable of that. And I'll say, especially after watching the Celtics and watching Drew, uh, just from afar, it, there's no regrets about making the trade. Like, just the craftiness that he brings and the elusiveness, the ability to get those shots off. Like, this this is a player that you needed to go get, and they got him, but we need to see why. We need to, we need to see the reason he's been so good in, in playoff series, in games, late in games. And so, yeah, I'm looking forward to these three games to just uh, continue to see what he brings because he's already brought some of it, but we need the, <laughs> we need the full package. Oh man! Oh, um, hey yo! Wow! Just... Uh, I, yeah, no, I, 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 I totally agree. And, and <laughs> wow, I'm trying to let it slide, but um, but yeah, the, you got you have three games to really to really submit yourself here. Um, and and, and end the season strong. Let's go to some of the Twitter comments. Uh, at Mikey Rocks Lang says Trey, they showed Giannis walking with his family, no boot on. I mean, would you have a boot on with a calf? Do you have? I don't. Know. Um, uh, I, mean, I don't. I don't know. He says, I would assume that's a good sign. I would think with an ankle or a foot, something like that, you have a boot. I don't know if you have a boot on the calf. Um, but he could be on crutches, though, if it was that bad. So I guess he wasn't. Boy, uh, I would assume that's high. a good sign. Slight limp, but to be expected, we'll wait for the MRI. At Drew Barron just says, nothing really matters until we get the official diagnosis. Hmm. Um, at Light Sarah says, Pat Beth, as a starter, might have saved our championship chances. B should have a shorter leash like a rookie. AJ Green can take his spot moving forward. Ajax should have gotten more run in him this game. Mid giving a glimpse of playoff mode. Dame needs to show up. So again, it's not just us. This is like this is this is these were like Sarah's thoughts after the game, and he he felt time to put in. Dame needs to show up. Uh, at Raider R. Newt, four one four says, I know it's just a win, and I know the Celtics didn't play their guys, but when he feels good after these last four. By the way, Celtics are weak for always uh, pulling their guys. At C three, that dude Clark. Says get Greek rested for two weeks. Pat Bev double double. Good move, Doc. Um, at bad businesses, defend, depending on severity, I think we should rest GA for the first round after seeing what happened to KD coming back from his calf strain too soon. Again, I, uh, there, to me, again, that's a non starter. If you have to rest him for the first round, Chuck deuces up and let's we, we're going home. I, I get, like I said, unless Damian Lillard is, is, is going to be a true number one, 
we're going home because I, I don't see how Giannis – I don't see how you win a series with this team, no Giannis in the first round. And I, I don't would, see it. And I would say that the pressure on horse is piping hot because you made – the pressure on the pressure on horse is is, is very high because again, you tr- you got rid of Doctor Griffin for Doc, and then you talk about now you're gonna rest Giannis in the front. I, yeah, I don't know. I think the organization have a tough time doing that because you know that obviously that significantly impacts your chances of winning that series if you don't have Giannis playing and you're gonna sit him for the first round gambling. This team's gonna make to the second. I don't see that. Let, let me ask. So Karan Jammer Kenner has, has comes in and says y'all are tripping. We've seen enough since Giannis is out. I'd rather sit Dane to make sure he doesn't get hurt because we're going to have to be full strength in the playoffs. Do you let, let's let's stay right there? What do you think about that? Should the Bucks proactively just shut down the big three and say we're done to the playoffs? We we put everybody in bubble wrap and and, and go wait to the playoffs. No. Uh, I mean, no, I mean, we, we, so d- d- keep in mind, Dane was out against Memphis. He was out against Washington. He was out against Atlanta. Dane got a three game break. He got a, he got a little break from um, uh, what's it? March 30th through April 5th. Right. So he did get a little bit of rest there. But I think at this point, why would you rest Dane? Why, why not try to help Dane get into a groove, get into a bit more of a groove? Maybe, you know, capture some of that magic that he's had in the past here. Give him three games to, to, to start feeling like Dame again. I, I just – I don't see the, the point in resting him because at that point you're basically saying we're just happy ending up with the seed wherever we are. We don't really care. Uh, you got Cleveland and New York obviously surging, Orlando surging too. I, I don't think you rest you rest Dame. I just I don't, I don't see that. I would definitely disagree, and here's why. We've seen enough of what? <laughs> we, we've seen enough of losing, so let's go lose some more to head into the playoffs? No, that, does, that gives you no momentum going in. That gives you no confidence. And Dame has to be out there getting looks, getting shots up. Look, he's not shown a level of consistency this year, consistently uh, up and down. <laughs> That's what he is. And so you, you've got to get something going, especially Chris sitting out tomorrow. Like at that point, you're just asking to lose uh, and then asking the Cream City crossover to deliver more losing post games uh, and, and start a new streak. So, yeah, no, nah, that's that's why I'd say no. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm with all of y'all, man. I, I can't I'm, I'm not with the, the sitting in, in the uh, in the before we get to the postseason here. You got to go play. Um, and again, we keep crying and crying about how, you know, gelling and guys needing to be together and big three hadn't been together. Again, Dane, to me, it, it would be di- when you say we've seen enough, I push back and say, no, we haven't. You know, we have what, not bro? seen enough. In my opinion, we haven't. Go ahead. You know what? Here's an, here's an interesting thing. We get a win tomorrow night and let's say Cleveland and the Knicks lose. Do we think about letting some of our guys sit the last two games of the season if we know that our floor is the three seed? Now, there, now that's, that's something, I, I, get, that's something that's, I can get with. That's yeah. something I can get with. I can do that, too. I, I think that may make sense. If we get a win tomorrow night and then we look at the standings and say, all right, the worst we're going to finish is the three seed. You know what? Shut these guys down. Let's let everybody rest. Let's let everybody get their, get their mind straight. And let's prepare for the playoffs. I, I wouldn't have an issue with that. So that that is true. If we do get a win tomorrow, maybe it does make some sense to like throw the young boys in. Let them get some. Let them get some run. Let them get because if we need them, you know, it, it only helps if they got experience. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I I can get down with that. I can definitely get down with that. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm, I'm with that. Um, the Bucks tonight get a win. Uh, man, I'm looking at the score from the, the Suns game. Clippers are up 53 to 16 right now. What in the hell is going on in Phoenix? They have everybody playing. Yeah, Booker, Bill, KD. That is that's a wild score out in Phoenix. Um, but uh, but the Bucks get a win tonight. Much needed victory over the Boston Celtics. They win it 104 uh, to 91. Fellas, you want to uh, get in, get in some game balls here? Yep. I'm going Patrick Beverly. I'm going. I'm, I, I got to. I got to go with Patrick Beverly. It's definitely. It's always not when you see Patrick Beverly score, score above 15 points, really above 10. It's always. It's always surprising. But I think the way he stepped up tonight, what he brought to the team from a points, rebounds, but also passing as well, uh, and 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 stepping into that role seamlessly. Man, I'm my game ball goes to Pat Bev tonight. Belt to ass. <laughs> 
Yep, and it's back. Uh, Derry Bird, for me, I just love the way he was able to come in with the confidence after Giannis got hurt and knocked down a big three to increase the lead. I think they were only – only up 11 at that point after after the injury and so he comes in shoots one from like 30 feet and and drills it and that, that felt like it kind of put put it away combine that with chris's clutch shots and and shot making in the fourth i think uh that dairy bird three was huge and so he'll get my game ball uh I, i'm gonna go with you jt i'm, I'm gonna yeah, go two for pat bev 20 and 10 tonight uh, best guard on the floor, 8 of 13, 4 of 8 from 3. Um, no turnovers as well, plus 12 on the night. Patrick Beverly, um, at, again, he gets called into the starting lineup and uh, proves Doc right. Uh, makes him, you know, always make your, your, your head coach look good. Uh, and he made, made him like a genius tonight, and that was a very good decision uh, to put him into the starting lineup. And the Bucks got to win because of it, 104 to 91. Good stuff from um, – from from Pat Bevin from the Bucks, uh, Cody Hagan says, "Can we talk about how there was no free throws?" And yeah, we, we we touched on that for um for a second there. Uh, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, like we talked about, and somebody in the chat, chat talked about they, you know, it, it was a very loosely called game, playoff kind of feel. I think in the playoffs play a little tighter, but playoff kind of feel. I do think again, if the Bucks play hard and play aggressive, that should be an advantage to the Milwaukee Bucks if they're going to call games like that. So. Um, not a lot of free throws had, but again, it was, it was okay. Okay. Um, big, uh, big, <laughs> big, uh, a lot of games on the docket. Uh, a lot of games on the docket tonight. Corinne Jam McKinnis is 86 in the chat and only 25 likes. Yeah, I, I feel you, Corinne. Like it up. Where the like likes it. at? Yeah, like where the it. likes at? Subscribe. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, like it. Yeah, like, subscribe that. to the pod. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, it's all that. Um, Nuggets 94 84 over the Jazz. Uh, right now, that is in the fourth quarter. The Blazers beating the Pels. He said the Clippers score is interesting. The Warriors are beating the the Lakers right now. The Pacers put up 140 over the Raptors, 140-123. Uh, Joel Embiid looking good, 121-2 over the six over the Pistons. Uh, the Mavericks beat the Hornets. The Mavericks have 49 wins, folks. The Mavericks have more wins than the Milwaukee Bucks. That is actually insane. Uh, the, the Mavericks are 49 and 30. Who would have thought that when the season started that the Maver Dallas Mavericks would be on such a run? Uh, the Bucks win it tonight. Heat beat the Hawks in over in wow, double overtime. Uh, they've, they've been struggling with the Hawks. Uh, no, that was Boston struggling with the Hawks. My bad. Um, the Thunder beat the Kings and then the Timberwolves. I think 51 points from Ant, from Ant, uh, Ant Man tonight, 131 21. The Spurs get a dub. Oh, the Rockets did beat the Magic tonight. Wow, that is Thank a big goodness. loss. That is a big loss for Orlando. So basically, I mean, the, the Bucks right now are essentially with two, your two games up on Orlando. You do have to play Orlando twice. One win against – so uh, you're in a position now where I believe one a win tomorrow yeah. puts you in that spot, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, chat. I believe a win tomorrow against Orlando, you could do what you just talked about, JT. You could rest your guys for the rest yep. of the season, and I believe you couldn't fall less than third. I, I'd have to be 100% sure on that, but I think that's right. I might be wrong, but I think that's right. Um, and, again, if not, even if, even if you did, I think you'd have to get to the, a tiebreaker. I believe the Bucks. I'm not sure if they have a tiebreaker over Cleveland. Again, Cleveland's 3-7 in their last 10, um, but that would create some heavy breathing room uh, if the Bucks can beat Orlando um, tomorrow night. So that is – that is a big loss for the Orlando Magic. And, again, just shows me Orlando, that's, uh, that's unserious basketball. If you're the Orlando – and this is where I go at, and, and, and I know and we'll talk about this in a second too. But this is what I'm talking about when I say to New York Knicks fans – and let's, we'll, we'll go there since we're going there. When I say to New York Knicks fans, and they got very upset when I said the Knicks aren't a good basketball team. Now, I want to make sure, again, this is relative – relative to, like, winning championships. Because, again, this is the, this is the cream city crossover. We, we're only talking chip talk. I, yeah, no, yeah, you're better than the Atlanta Hawks. You're better than the Brooklyn Nets. You're better than the Charlotte Hawks. Yeah, I'm not saying you're Detroit, dog. Like, I'm not – yes, I'm not saying you're you're a two-pack of ass. What I'm saying is when I'm when we talk about good teams, I'm talking about can, are you a contender or are you a pretender? That's what I'm talking about. And to me, the New York Knicks are really not contenders. Just like the Orlando Magic, and that showed the Orlando Magic had a chance to go up and grab the two seat. 
And again, now if you lose to Milwaukee head to head, that's one thing. But but there's no reason that you go out tonight and you lose. And you Rockets to play some good basketball. But the Rockets are not are, are definitely not contenders. They are a young team trying to get trying to get on the rise. And you go out and lose a game like that when you are struggling and trying to ascend to the two seed, right? To get yourselves in position. Those are the losses where I go. Mm, that's why I say Orlando's not not a not a good team. Again, do I think they're trash? No, but again, I, I'm talking relative at this point. So yes, they are good in the sense that yeah, they're decent, decent. New York, Nick, the New York Knicks are good. They're a decent basketball team. But when I'm talking good, there's a different level that I'm really talking about. I'm talking about can you come out of the East good? That's that's what I'm really talking about. And I don't think the New York Knicks are that. And I don't think the Orlando Matt. Like I would like if you. Let me let me put it like this. I'm talking about let, let, let's, let me do it like this. If you told me that I had to bet my last hundred dollars, my mortgage, whatever, and you gave me the New York Knicks or the or the um, the Miami Heat right now, who have been struggling in Miami, you know they they're gonna be in the play in or something like that. I would probably take the Miami Heat over the New York Knicks. If you, if you just told me to to get out of the East, I would take the I would take the Heat. I, I don't trust the New York Knicks again, and I don't. And the reason, and he, I give you the only reason is because Jalen Brunson to me is not a, he is not a good enough player to win a chip. Very good player, leads you through a regular season, all that kind of stuff. I don't think you can win a championship with Jalen Brunson as your lead dog. I just don't. Maybe Knicks fans think they can. I don't necessarily think so. Or Julius so Randle as your side but, kick. Well, <laughs> correct, but I, but I, but I, but I'll say but I say I'll say the same thing. About Orlando and their best player right now. I don't know what Paolo's going to get into, but I'll say the same thing about Orlando, and I say the same thing about Cleveland. Donovan Mitchell's not a good enough one to win a championship. That's my opinion on it. That's why I say you're not good. The other, the other thing about like pertaining to the Knicks, though, and I get it. You, the, the team is playing very well. You've got Julius Randle, All NBA caliber player, at least a couple years ago, out now. But one thing I'll say about the Knicks is that. Thibodeau is known for this. He had him boys running in the regular season, and he'll run them boys into the ground, and they get to the playoffs, and they hit that second round, and they're gassed. They all they bring nothing to the table, and he's been doing that since he was since he was with the Bulls. So, a part of the reason why you can't believe in the Knicks is because you've never seen him do it before. You've seen the Heat do it before. You've definitely and you've seen the Heat. You've seen the Heat take an overall inferior team very far. They've gone to the championship two, multiple times with an inferior squad. Whereas conversely, the Knicks. Seems like the second round is their ceiling, and that's okay because that's a good team if you can make it to the second round of the playoffs. That's just not an elite team. I'll do it from the Bucks' perspective. Can you rely on your best two players, talking Orlando, talking New York Knicks, talking Cleveland Cavaliers, can you rely on them to outplay Giannis and Dame every every se- or every game or, or four games out of seven in the series? No. No, no chance in hell. So that's that's where I'm at with those two teams or those three teams, and, and that's really why I honestly don't – I'm not scared of the Magic to even beat us two out of these next two. I think – honestly, I think the Bucks can get both of them. Um, just because, like, the, the talent level there, the, the depth, I think, the more experience, I just think that it's it's Bucks by a mile. So, yeah, no, I would definitely agree with what you're saying, Trey. Yeah, and, I, and that's why the Knicks – they were all upset yesterday, but I mean, or the other day, but that – that doesn't mean you can't play good ball. That doesn't mean you can't win a series against the Bucs. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I don't – yeah, I think we're all saying I don't think you measure up, like, in, in that sense. Like, I, I don't think it's there. Um, and, again, but you have – just like every year, you have the opportunity to prove me wrong. And, again, how – and that's what people like, – and I'm, I, I'm not even saying it from the Bucks' perspective. I think people – well, what, what, are, what, are, what do you think the Bucs are if the Knicks are – I'm talking about your team. I'm talking about the New York Knickerbockers. That's what, that's what I'm talking about. What the Bucks do is irrelevant to what the Knicks can do. Can the Knicks come out of the East? No, I don't think they can. Prove me wrong, Jalen Brunson. I, I, I'll wait, and I'll be waiting here, and I want, and we're going to keep receipts. Don't worry about what the Bucks do. I'm talking about the Knicks because I, I told you the Bucks have problems. The Knicks Nick fans out here act like, like, oh like they God's gift to the earth. So y'all prove it to me this year and get out the East, and then I'll crown you. You want to crown her ass? Crown them. Then I'll crown you. Um, and when they when they go yeah. down, hey, it's gonna be a field day in our YouTube comments from that post game from last from last games uh, last games post games because they they had it out for us after what Trey said. So we'll we'll see oh, yeah. uh, was, we'll see we'll see when uh, when the Knicks lose. Um, ultimately, they they will, and so Ooh. we'll we'll have a field day, especially if the Bucks get further, or it might be us knocking them out, which would be even better. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would I would welcome a series against the New York Knicks. I would welcome one. Doc Rivers just has to have a better game plan. That's it. Doc Rivers, Doc Rivers give me a better game plan. Uh, but but and at least this is some weirdo. Nine Tails Kyle says, I hope Giannis Achilles snaps. So I'm going a, I'm to a go ahead and and and, re, and put, yeah, you're, you, you're out of here. You want man in timeout? Technical, be- get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> I made a that. I made a check. Check Double tech. It's almost, almost more. <laughs> Little T. It's almost more free throws than uh, Buckshot tonight. So absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Said you want you want you hope Giannis a kill. Like, that's what, like, isn't that like that's when that's weirdo stuff. It's weirdo stuff. You mad the Knicks? You mad? The, you're mad the Knicks can't win a championship, and now I want Giannis a kill. He snap. You're a weirdo. Or he's a Celtics weirdo. fan who lost tonight. Look, yo. People, people are watching. That's what I want to say. People are watching. They, they wait till the end to say some weirdo stuff like that. But they're watching, so you know we got eyes on us, baby. Well, it, but here's the game. K&A family says y'all sounding way too confident. I'm not talking about the Bucks. This is a totally different. I'm just talking. And maybe, 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 maybe you're talking about what Chris, maybe what you said about Orlando. And, you know, I'm really talking about the. I don't think the Knicks are that good. It's really not even about the Bucks. I, I'm not saying the Knicks can't be. I'm saying the Knicks aren't good enough to, to win no type of championship. Or to come close. That's that's what I'm saying about the um, about the uh, uh, about the New York Knicks. Um, anyway, uh, Nat, let, let's move on. A um, couple things on on topic list: national championship. John Calipari. I don't know where where you guys want to want to lead in there on on any of that. Uh, Calipari leaving Kentucky, going to Arkansas. It happened literally right after we ended uh, the other night, um, which was which was kind of crazy. And then of course. I, I thought the game was – I thought it was a bit of a snooze fest. I thought it was a stinker. It started way too late. started like 9.30. I didn't even make it to one shining moment. I, I I didn't make it. I didn't make it. I saw I saw the game, and I immediately was, was done after that, you know. But uh, it, it was a snooze fest. Zach Eady is – you know, he's, he's – I, I don't know what he's looking like as a pro, but I wasn't – I just wasn't I'm, – I'm just not super impressed by him. He can do some things in the league. I'm just not super impressed. And uh, and UConn just dominant. I mean, they were dominant the entire tournament. But they, I, I, like they didn't have any. What was they didn't have any double? Was it they didn't have any single digit games in the tournament? Something like that. So I mean, it was just didn't last year abs- either. I don't think. Yeah. So I mean, again, t- two straight di- and that's very hard to do. I mm-hmm. uh, like what's been done since what Florida since uh, yeah, Billy yeah. Diamond and those boys. Um, two straight just natties of just pure dominance and so um and then the other part about this interest that we talked about uh we, we, we've spoken a little bit is the fact that um is the fact that um the women's tournament had had higher viewership than the men's um we'll see if that happens next year no caitlin clark but i thought that was interesting too so any of that you want you want to get at um as we uh, wrap the show here you know, one thing I'll one thing I'll say about that that game against Purdue, right? I, this Connecticut team, this UConn team is, is great. And good for good for uh, you know, good for Dan Hurley. I put him up there with Billy Donovan from Florida, who went back to back in like '05 and '06 when Florida won back to back titles. Uh, Connecticut obviously is the bluest of blue blood basketball programs, especially over the thirty last thirty years. I believe Connecticut now has six national titles over the last thirty years, which is incredible because people talk about Duke and you know, uh, Duke has what three? Because it's they have two times the amount of national titles Duke has. And I know Duke has some appearances as well, but uh, I certainly you got to you you got to acknowledge that the Connecticut is the basketball best basketball school in, in the, in the uh, over the last thirty years, and that's saying a lot because Carolina's got a few titles, Duke's got a few titles, I believe Kansas has one or two as well. Um, and you know, shout out to them. One thing I will say too, though, another thing I'll say is the women's championship. That's because everybody care, right? Nobody care about the men's tournament. Nobody care. Once everybody's teams were out, nobody gave a damn. Everybody was just like, all right, well, kind of is what it is. But the women's tournament, oh, the drama and everything just made you watch. You 100% had to watch because you just had to see can Caitlin Clark take this team of Iowa, which not to take anything away from her. Caitlin Clark's playing with physical therapists, teachers, uh, you know, probably dentists, doctors, maybe some future law students. She's not playing with other WNBA players. I mean, maybe Hannah Stolke. Shout out to Hannah Stolke, who uh, that's the name All Star. Because when you think the name Hannah Alt's Hannah Stolke, then you look at Hannah Stolke, you go, wait a minute. Oh, I see. Okay. Anyway, 
Um, yeah, yeah. And now, like, right, just like Jerome Powell, the Treasury Secretary. When you see a name Jerome Powell, you think one thing, and you see that dude show up, and you're like, hmm, oh, his parents are playing. I'm just saying. Any, anyway, um, you know, but but you watched it. You watched Caitlin Clark take this team at Iowa. I see this course where people are like, she's not better than Tarasi, she's not better than Candace Parker. And I say, yeah, they all played at basketball powerhouses, guys. How impressive is it when you pass into other lottery picks in the WNBA because you're not passing the teachers, <laughs> you're not you're not passing the physical therapists. And yeah, Caitlin Clark, man, give her her due. Put some respect on her name. I, I she does belong on the Mount Rushmore of college basketball women. And I would 100 percent take that battle, right? Put Cheryl Shoops up there, put Cheryl Miller up there, put Caitlin Clark up there, and then you can battle about the rest. I think my biggest takeaway from the men's national championship is just how good Dan Hurley is. Like it came out of nowhere too. They went and hired him uh, while I believe they were still in the AAC. And then they, they made that transition to the big East. And he was a guy at Rhode Island that I watched a lot, never really produced that same caliber of a team that he's producing year in and year out. Now he ultimately beat Trey young in Oklahoma. Uh, and in the, I think it was like, what would, it, what would have been like 2018, maybe? Yeah, 2018 NCAA tournament um, with Rhode Island. But other than that, you know, they, they lost. And I never would have thought he would have been at this height of, of men's college basketball. Like, this guy is a really damn good coach. And it's the proof is in the sets. The proof is in the guys who he recruits. They all buy in. Uh, you have a mix of NBA talent there. But – it's a, it's a team that plays like a team instead of just individuals. So I think that's why they're able to be su so successful. And then, look, I was just telling JT, like, already getting two national championships in your first, what, three, four years at UConn is crazy. And to do it back-to-back -back in a dominating fashion is just ridiculous. Uh, and then the other thing you could touch on just to lead into that is how much are you throwing at him if you're Kentucky? How much would you be willing to pay Dan Hurley? He's kind of dodged around the answer, said no on one podcast, dodged around the answer on Pat McAfee's podcast. And so you never know. I mean, would he be willing to, to make, a, make a step? I mean, at this point, is it even a step up? And that's the thing. So UConn would have to throw a bag at him as well. But I think that's really what you're looking at to replace John Calipari. And then, you know, maybe – Billy Donovan, I'm hearing he's trying to go back down to the coaching, uh, college coaching. Um, so maybe maybe you do that too, because I think he would be just as successful as as Cal, honestly, um, because the last nine years have been so bad, uh, and he's familiar with the SEC. So that that's one thing Billy mm -hmm. Donovan has going for him. Let me, let me solve. Let me let me go ahead and just solve this for you right now. Dan Hurley is not going to be tough. You know why he said right. you got to talk to my wife. Because his wife is from the Northeast. I think she's from Jersey or something. Everywhere he's been in the Northeast, she is not going to go to Lexington. She would probably be absolutely disgusted if she went to Lexington. It's not going to Every, happen. Everybody got a price. Yeah, that's everybody what it is. Got everybody everybody does have a price. And everybody Coach Cal, Coach Cal, look, maybe the grass, a lot of the fans were trying to push him out. I don't know that the alum or the – maybe the boosters, but I don't know that the alum or, like, the athletic department was necessarily trying to push him out. And so – the grass isn't always greener. Like I said, you, you never know. With the resources he's going to have at Arkansas, with the guys that they did have on their roster that entered the portal that could very well come back, and then the recruiting class Cal signed, you know, he might just go go to Arkansas <coughs> and be just as good as he would have been in Kentucky. So I wouldn't be surprised if that happens either. I wouldn't. I really wouldn't be surprised if they said they're getting, what, $5 million NIL money. Yeah. Um, so he, he about to field a little a, a little mini mini basketball team NBA um lineup right there with with five million going. Uh, Jonathan Porter says, "You ever tell a bitty I got G? You know what I mean? Hey, hey, hey. Oh, well, guess what? I'm JP. We should get JP on the pod. <laughs> we should get JP on here, man. We should get JP on here and do a, a guest performance crossover." Um, they win the final. Now, we'll have them do, do it. We should have, we should have them do it. Um, so la, la, real quickly, though, uh, Damian Lillard did. Interestingly enough, Damian Lillard was asked, um, there's a short list of players, NBA players, who have had a soleus strain. Damian Lillard is one of those guys. He said that he had it. He strained his calf. Then he came. So he had a strained calf, came back after nine days of strained calf, and then got the soleus injury after he came back. Um, like I said, a game or two after he came back. He then said, um, after he got his soleus, 
it took him two weeks to come back from the solar injury. So um, that that's that's what he t- that's what it took Dame. But you know, you know, Dame might have been a birthday party or two while he was doing that. So he might, <laughs> you know, he might took a couple more days that he really needed to. Uh, but but who know? I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that that so Damian Lillard though, did have the did have the injury and said it should be around. He, he and and Damian Lillard said when he heard that, that that was the injury, he felt a little better because so I think the Bucks' first playoff game would be what in like eleven days or so. So mm-hmm. I, I think that would you know as long as that's what it is, I think that would put him on track to play then. Uh, yeah, so one hundred percent, you're gonna shut Giannis down for the rest of the regular season, and then uh, he, hopefully, like I said, he's back. Uh, you know, again, I, I think he's happy game one. I saw somebody in the chat say by game two, I, you you cannot play around these boys, and uh, you know I know it. You just can't play around. You can't play around. If Giannis can go, you got to go. Like, it, like to me, this should be – every game should be championship or bust. And we just talked about it, John. We talked about it the last show or a couple shows ago. We were like, can this team recover from down 0-1? Can they – Can they? are they going to be able to go on the road and steal one? On, I don't know that. You need to take advantage of every scenario. And, again, if guys get hurt during the playoffs, that is what it is, and he gets hurt. Um, but what did they say? If you got to give an arm, give an arm. If you got to give a leg, give a leg. You know, I need I, what I hope is that winning one championship doesn't have you in the mindset that like it's it's different when you're sleeping on them streets in in Greece and and you don't and you don't know where your next meal gonna come. That motivation is different where from where you are now, where you have millions and millions of dollars. And so I, I you know, I, that's what I'm hoping is that. We and and I don't know if that some of that crept into what happened against Miami last year. Yeah, I already got a title. Yeah, I don't need. To, yeah, we good. I, I need you. I I want that. Second. Do you? How much do you really want the second one? Do you want it as much as your first? And I I think again, I saw his leg bend back like a paperclip, and I could tell because that, that he. I don't want to say I, I I don't have any way. I, I'm just guessing. Ninety percent of guys. Ninety five percent of guys. Don't show up. They, 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 it's over. The season's over when that happens. Giannis not only showed up, he showed out in the first game after that into the finals. Uh, he missed a couple, but in the first game of the finals, he was there and he balled out. That's what I. That's the left. That that to me felt like a guy that thought this might be my only opportunity to get here. Um, and and you gotta you gotta get that feeling back. Um, and and hopefully that he, hopefully he does. Um, okay, any any final thoughts on the Bucks? Uh, yeah, I know, man. I mean, I, I be trying to get you know, no, I gives me anything there. Uh, any <laughs> any final thoughts on the Bucks? They get the win tonight. Uh, what was the final score here? I'm trying to find it. Oh, 104 91 over the Boston Celtics, number one team in the East. Uh, the Bucks get a dub, like, no matter what you know, the Buc- Boston missed a couple guys. Bucks find a way to get the dub. What you guys think? Love to see it, right? Love to see this team come back and compete tonight. But at the end of the day, it's it's, it's hard, right? The impact is, is a bit muted. <laughs> JT, echo, echo, boy, JT. Um, yeah, good to see him get the, <laughs> good to see him get the dub. Look, I'm gonna move the goalposts here. I'm gonna say, I think the Celtics are just underwhelming versus the Bucks. I'll say that so my head doesn't get put on a stick. Uh, look, I just, I just think that, okay, bro. I, th- I, I think the, I think the Celtics just haven't shown me much when you look at their matchups with head to head with the Bucks. Two and two, right? But the two losses were terrible games played by the Bucks. One, we had Giannis out, I believe, right? Or somebody out. Some one of the big remember. one of the big three was out, but 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 games that the Bucks kept close even in, even when they were right. playing right. poorly. So that's why I kinda say they're a little underwhelming to me because they allowed the Bucks to stick around even with one of the big three out and then um obviously uh uh just at the beginning of the season we we kept it close with them with the terrible game we we almost pulled it out too so yeah i just that's that's where i'm at with it i think this is a good win for the bucks confidence going forward ga heal up and then uh and then we'll see where we're at uh come playoff time so i'm i'm excited though absolutely i'm with you there we'll see what happens we'll be back at it tomorrow Woo! we got a lot going on um with the milwaukee bucks coverage we're at it tomorrow <clears throat> against the uh, Orlando Magic. So we'll be back for that one post game. We will then have, um, we'll then do a Bucks and 60 on Thursday night uh, on, on 97.3 the game, Worldwide iHeartRadio. And then the Bucks are back at it Friday. You'll have 
uh, on your T's and Q's Saturday, and the Bucks back at it again Sunday. So again, lots, lots, lots to come uh, in the uh, in the way of uh, the Cream City crossover, guys. Um, you know, coming, come. Well, I was about to say coming, coming in your eardrum. They coming uh, in your eardrum. That is that's <laughs> the craziest one. We can go ahead and Yo, wrap this thing. Hey. Wrap, 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 wrap it up now. Wrap it up now. That one is crazy. That one is crazy. Yo, that that one you can't. Like, dude, <laughs> dude, that's that's different. That's pretty hey, yo, hey, yo. Yo. Hey, yo. All right, all right, all right. My bad, my bad. Let's uh, yo. let's get out of here. Um, like I said, we'll be back tomorrow. Appreciate everybody for watching the show, joining with us, staying with us, sticking with us, uh, all night long. You can be doing anything in the world, but you were here with us. Um, so again, man, uh, appreciate all your follows, like, subscribe, 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 and make sure to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend about the Cream City crossover Bucks post game shows every single night after every single Bucks game. This has been a Cream City Media Group production from the Guru Trey Cross with third JT, 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 hey, uh, <laughs> that's what I heard. <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> hey, yo, if we. If we are your enemy, it is only because we dare to tell you the truth. Don't take no.